so the last speaker of this uh, uh, session is the other co-organizer with Tangraj and that is Dr. Kesho Singh who comes from University of Alabama at Birmingham in the USA. Uh, Dr. Singh has made tremendous contribution uh, in the field of mitochondria and cancer research and he has been leading uh, and helping mitochondria research by setting up mitochondria societies in the US and as Sangra mentioned in the India and founded a journal called Mitochondrian and now it, today he is going to talk about human diversity and yeah. health disparities in the United States. Next, 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 next. Dr. Singh. Well, uh, introduction. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, talk to you and, and broaden a little bit of the scope of the diversity and disparity, not only uh, the genetic diversity, the other type of diversity as well, which we, we are talking about. So, uh, and so what I plan to do is, is talk to you about that and then in, in the second half of my talk, which is very uh, dear to me, is looking at the mitochondrial DNA diversity and its role in how it relates to cancer health disparity. So the, uh, the second half part of my talk is going to be uh, uh, concentrated on the cancer health disparity. So if we think about the, the disparity or uh, diversity in the United States, uh, there appears to be six groups, uh, American Indian, Asian American, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, White, non-Hispanic, and, and Native Hawaiians. And this is defined by the United States Office of Management and Budget in, uh, every 10 years. It's not based on the genetics and it's a socio-political uh, grouping uh, not based on the biology uh, as, as I mentioned according to the OMB definition and is rejected by the anthropological community altogether and considered as non-scientific. Uh, nevertheless, we have that, the, what we have uh, and as uh, Dr. Basu mentioned and, and, and uh, others, that there is a Eurocentric approach to uh, continue and just recently, uh, actually in 2019, just not too far ago, there was an uh, article written by Sarah Tiskov pointing out that, that how Eurocentric the, the studies have been. So there is a requirement from NIH now when we write grants that we have to do, uh, uh, define the population, why we choose one group or other, why not use other group uh, uh, as well. And if you look at in the larger scope of things, uh, that by, th this is 2016 here, but if I look at by 2050, that the population, the de demographics seem to change. Here you have the 60% of the group uh, in 2016 were uh, European, that seems to reduce by up to 46, and the other groups uh, uh, seem to, uh, in, uh, the size seem to increase. So we need to know, uh, as I mentioned in my previous uh, presentation, is that we need to know our population uh, based on genetics and everything else uh, who we're dealing with in order to uh, go for personalized uh, medicine. Uh, so, in w the health disparity as defined by NIH is the differences in the healthy status between the advantaged and disadvantaged population that are considered unfair and avoidable. A difference in health among segments of the population that occur by gender, race, ethnicity, education, income, disability, geography, or sexual orientation. So we should not forget that in the context of genetics, we should also remember uh, what we're dealing with in terms of the, the disparity. And then this is an unpopulation where you see underserved, uh, under undeserved, underprivileged, unemployed, underclass is all on, uh, on, at the end you have the uniformed, which the, the, the army and the soldiers who seem to have high level of dispar health disparities as well. So it also look at the, in the reason wise, uh, that uh, uh, rural versus the urban, then you have the, the neighborhood, and then if you look at the, the United States map, uh, this is the obesity in the US, and if you look at here, this is the Southeast Asia, uh, sorry, Southeast Asia, well, certainly not. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, this is the southeast uh, of the United States and you see I live somewhere here. So you can see why I'm obese. Uh, <laughs> then you look at the, 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 the obesity leading to diabetes, also linked to the poverty. There seems to be the southeast uh, concentration there as well. Uh, you also look at the cancer. Uh, the, this seems to be this red 
uh, mark what you see is the high rate of, of uh, cancer in, in that part of the United States as well. So obviously one need to know, uh, there are obviously is multifactorial, uh, but can be understand at least at the level of genetics uh, uh, and define that if there is a component of that it leads to the uh, uh, cancer disparity and other uh, disparities as well. So here what I'm giving an example of the cancer disparity, I've taken that slide from ACR uh, presentation where you see that, uh, and, and most of the studies what I'm going to present is, is uh, uh, in the context of the African American uh, population. So the, if you look at the breast cancer, the kidney cancer, liver, prostate, and cervical, and multiple myeloma, the African population is much more, the rate of this cancer is much higher uh, than compared to the, uh, to the Euro, uh, European population. Then if you look at the, uh, all other health disparities, if you look at the stroke, look at asthma, uh, asthma, so a 40% increase in stroke uh, in case of the African uh, American population. Look at asthma, higher three times more, heart disease, uh, breast cancer, and the list goes on here. Uh, so obviously there, there is a large focus on, on trying to understand why the African American uh, men or women have high level of health disparity. Uh, so, and, and don't forget the children. Uh, here is the, the children compared to the non-Hispanic whites. You find that there are two, two and a half times more infant mortality uh, in the African uh, uh, population. You also see twi twice SIDS population, asthma, obesity, and depression as well. So there's a lot to, lot to learn and a lot to figure out uh, with how much is the genetic uh, component is involved. But then if you look at the other population in the United States, uh, there are 3.4 million uh, South Asian uh, of the, uh, 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 and what you find that there is almost, I, I looked in, uh, in for the preparation of this talk, I didn't find any or, or much of the study related to this, this uh, ethnic group, United States. So obviously there seemed to be going to be some emphasis in, in this population as well. So, what are the answers? Uh, what what is being done uh, at NIH level? So there is uh, one. There is a National Institute of Minority and Health, uh, was instituted in 1980s. Then is driven by. Sorry, uh, I think I have missed the the figure here. Uh, something happened. So there is a regional. Uh, uh, so NCI uh, has divided the country in different regions, uh, region one, two, uh, three, and uh, four, and six here, and five and six, and I unfortunately don't see the, the picture that there. But then you also have uh, uh, NIH program, which is described as All of Us program, and this was started by uh, President Obama uh, in January 2015. He announced and he provided $215 million in 2016, and the idea here is to uh, to build uh, a, a database of close to uh, one million uh, uh, individuals and try to understand uh, the genetic uh, component which drives the health disparity. Then what other answers? Uh, Tangaraj and I have been talking about it uh, and, and one thing Indo-US uh, STF also uh, encourages us to do something, start something in order to address the, the, this issue. So we have come up with the, the Society of Diversity and, and uh, Health Disparity. Uh, we tuned, you'll hear more from it. And then the other thing was, which I got motivated uh, about two years ago, uh, to, to see what we can bring together, at least in the case of the cancer disparity, I started a journal uh, called Health uh, Cancer Health Disparity Journal. Some of the editorial board members are here, and I'm delighted to see them. Uh, they've been uh, very active and contributed uh, to the journal. This is in the second, uh, sec two and a half year ago. Uh, so that, that was one answer. Then we looked at, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the, the mitochondrial DNA diversity, what we are doing uh, in, this, in this area. Uh, but let me give you a little bit of, of introduction to, to the mitochondria and mitochondrial diversity. And the reason I bring it up, one, I'm a mitochondriac. The second thing is that when we're talking about the, the human diversity and looking for the variants in the nuclear genome, don't forget there is tons of mitochondria and mitochondrial genome, which and the crosstalk between the two is also important factor uh, involved in the uh, in uh, in the diversity and the, and related health disparity. So if you just look at the mitochondria in numbers, there are hundred thousand trillion mitochondria providing energy 
to you every every day as an adult. Uh, they die. Uh, the average life span of the mitochondria is about 100 days. Uh, the 2 billion mitochondria are made every second, uh, so we can talk and, and walk. And the 90% of the energy we need is sustained uh, from the mitochondria. And each mitochondria contains 17,000 or so assembly lines for making ATP that is the, the energy. Then if you look at the mitochondria as we for a long time has, has uh, considered that it only pro produces the uh, ATP. It is not just the case. It produces the ATP, but there are cell types where mitochondria produce very minimal amount of ATP. But it contains proteins. Uh, they are close to about 2,000 uh, so are mitochondrial proteins, uh, which have different functions. For example, you can see they are involved in iron metabolism, lipid morphology, uh, amino acid and transport, and, on, and so forth. We do not know what they actually do uh, in the mitochondria. And remind you that this but mitochondrial proteome varies from tissue to tissue. Uh, so that, that uh, variation may also contribute. If we look at the mitochondrial DNA content of uh, mitochondria, the mitochondrial num number also varies from tissue to tissue, and this encodes 16.6 kb uh, um, uh, mitochondrial genome, which uh, uh, encodes 37 genes. Of those, 13 are involved in the oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, and it, when it comes to human oocyte, it contains 5 million mitochondria and the function of those mitochondria and mitochondrial genome uh, uh, is unknown. So, and then there are some new uh, functions which have been described lately uh, that the mitochondria DNA are function in the extracellular traps. So these are snowfields that throw out the mitochondrial DNA to trap the bacteria. And then you find in the neutrophils doing the, doing the same thing as well. And then uh, when you think of the larger picture of that, this is a population genetics within the cell, but these mitochondria and mitochondrial DNA are talking to the nucleus. So this is anterograde response uh, in, from my, nucleus to mitochondria, and then you have a retrograde response from mitochondria to the nucleus. Then you have this, uh, this extracellular information transferred. So what happens that when more ATP is made, is thrown out of the cell, and those ATP by the progenic receptor system comes back and does whatever it's supposed to do. Then the intracellular information transfer where mitochondria can move from one cell to the other, and that's a, a direct transfer. That then they have the mitochondrial uh, peptides. Uh, they go through the exosomes, and uh, and and that there is mitochondrial vesicles as well. And they're also involved in the triggering the innate and adaptive immune response. So uh, hmm, something. All right. Anyway, so this was a picture here, which uh, showing that uh, mitochondria can affect any organ at any age, and that these mitochondrial diseases. The way we have come up with the definition in the last 15, 20 years, that if there's a more than three organ is affected, considered mitochondrial disease, because on an average it takes about 15 to, to 20 doctors to diagnose a mitochondrial patient even today, in spite of all the technology we have, is inherited through. The, the mother, so it's maternal inheritance, so sperm mitochondrial DNA get degraded, and that leads to what we are doing uh, uh, currently. So when you have the maternal inheritance, you can, as Dr. Thangaraj mentioned, that you can map the, the human migration looking at the mit different mitochondrial DNA haplogroup, and we have been interested in looking at those groups, how the risk of cancer is, is found in those population. And the mutation rate, what you find in, in this mitochondrial genome, which leads to the haplogroup, is that about close to about three percent per million uh, million year? So what we uh, actually uh, came up with, uh, uh, that's actually 2000. Mm, Seven, uh, NCI invited me to uh, uh, develop a, break sh um, a workshop where GWAS studies done by a lot of epidemiology uh, groups were not panning out. And the idea was to let's talk about mitochondria and the mitochondrial nuclear crosstalk, and that may perhaps uh, will uh, advance the field. So what we found at the time was that there is a G10398, which is, uh, I call it good to awful. Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, 
uh, odd ratio in, for, in regards to breast cancer is 1.6. If you look at the prostate cancer, this is 19.8. This is just ND3. Then you find that there is a synergy between the T, T4, uh, 4216C in the ND1 region, and together they make about 3, 3.1 odd ratio. Then you find this uh, uh, particular um, uh, uh, variant, uh, 12308. Uh, the odd ratio in per prostate you find two and, and renal in this case. So here the 1098 turned out to be is prevalent in close to about 1% African uh, women and in fact is also prevalent in Indian population uh, as well. So what we decided to do is let's do some, some uh, bench uh, studies to find out uh, that uh, and so this 10398 uh, group uh, good to awful uh, women get very aggressive cancers in their 30s and ultimately we because the metastasis, uh, they die uh, very uh, quickly after that. So what we decided to do is can we recapitulate that into a cell system. So what we, the way we can do it, that we can take the polymerase gamma, and I'll come back in a minute what, what this protein does. It is a, uh, the only protein involved in the mitochondrial DNA replication through our studies previously. We identified a dominant uh, a negative mutation in the PolG. When we express that, what we can do, we can wipe out the mitochondrial DNA all together in the cell and create the cell which are divide of mitochondrial DNA. Now we can take that cell, transfer any mitochondria at will we want. So in this case, what we did was we, we screened 100 or so African women who uh, we found 10398 uh, mutation or uh, variant, and then we took the platelet, which does not contain the nucleus, transfer that into the cell which do not contain uh, the mitochondrial DNA altogether, and then ask the question, what does it do? So here is the uh, analysis of those 10398. Uh, that's the wild type, and here is the 10398, and this is showing that the expression by the mitochondrial genome transfer was at the same level as you find in the 10398 as in the you know, uh, good, good to awful 10398 here. So then this set the scene that we can, we can ask some questions. And what we, like a simple study you do in terms of trying to figure out what it means in the tumor genesis. So first we looked at the, the ROS production, the 10398 uh, shows much more higher level of ROS uh, by the DHEA assay. Uh, it, uh, it has the slow uh, a reduced uh, uh, growth rate, but what what was interesting that it it has the reduced um, membrane potential. Uh, one would, would as would would expect that alteration in the mitochondrial function, and we looked at more in more detail what we found that the uh, the enzymatic activity of complex one uh, was highly upregulated in the in the good to awful group than the good group here. And we looked at the, this is the Oxford blood showing the, the complexes, various different complexes, but this one, one is stand out pretty, pretty quickly saying that the complex one is probably driving the tumor genesis process. We looked at some other detail, uh, whether there's a uh, uh, resistant to apoptosis, and the, it, it was obvious that the, the good to awful uh, were much more resistant to atopside, which is uh, one of the uh, chemotherapy drugs uh, in regards to the uh, apoptosis. Uh, we looked at the other pathways, and in fact, I'm not going to go too much in detail, but except to show you that the AKT pathway, which is the survival pathway, uh, the AKT gets phosphorylated, and then when we, t we take the inhibitor of, phosphor uh, of the AKT, uh, here, Ly uh, and, uh, compound, you see the phosphorylation is gone, and that that brings to uh, the susceptibility to uh, to the good to awful group. So. Then when we genograft it, put in mice, uh, and uh, what we find that the colony forming, uh, first of all, colony forming assay was much higher, and these uh, 10, 3, 10, 3, 9, 8, good to awful were much more metastatic to lung than, than, uh, than the, and the, the good group here. So we have continued this work uh, in a different way, like looking at uh, reduced uh, mitochondrial DNA content. Uh, what we found that in the prostate cancer uh, from African American men seems to have low mitochondrial DNA content, and it's it's normally low in the normal prostate, 
but then in the tumor you find close to about 20 fold reduction in the mitochondrial DNA content. So what does it mean? Uh, we are continuing to work on it, trying to figure out what is upstream which is driving this low mitochondrial DNA content in the, uh, in, in, in the prostate of African uh, men. Uh, the one of the genes which we have looked at here uh, is the polymerase gamma as I mentioned. This can cause mitochondrial DNA polymerase so there are a handful of genes which are involved in the regulation of mitochondrial DNA copy number. Uh, so uh, mitochondrial DNA polymerase contains uh, three different uh, subdomains, exonuclease domain, linker domain, and the polymerase domain. And the mutation in the exonuclease domain can lead to mutation in the mitochondrial DNA. And, and the mutation in the polymerase domain can lead to the depletion of the mitochondrial, uh, mitochondrial DNA. So I'm just going to run this through. I think I already described this. So, the, so what is known, and, and this is like the P53 of, of mitochondria, so germline mutation in PALG, and there are close to about 300 mutations in this gene, uh, are involved in, in various different, uh, different diseases, and I think some of them are listed here. We actually mapped the somatic mutation in PALG and found that they were much more prevalent uh, in various different cancers. Uh, then we also followed that, that the CAG repeat, uh, which is one of the the variants in the PALG gene that also seem to correlate with the high risk of uh, breast cancer uh, in African women. Uh, be, so, so what we have looked at is, is how uh, we can uh, look at one of the variants, uh, 1143, uh, which is prevalent, and ask the question, what does it do in terms of uh, tumor genesity? So we looked at a, an authentic dominant negative mutant, which we know that depletes mitochondrial DNA, and compared that against the... Uh, uh, so, what, you, what we see that the mitochondrial DNA content in case of the 1135, uh, sorry, the matrigal assay goes up, the mitochondrial DNA content uh, goes down, and what we find in the case of the E1143G the Paul, and the PALG, that the matrigal also goes up. So this is a work in progress, uh, and we're trying to figure out what it means in terms of tumor genesis. What we do see is that, that the you know, the 1143G uh, seem to alter the metabolism, and this is the, the glucose uh, concentration, uh, and this is the, the control, 1135, we know that there is alteration here in terms of the glucose concentration, but you find it in the 1143G as well. Uh, and this is the, the looking at the ROS level. So what I've shown you to conclude is that the mitochondrial DNA encoded, uh, good to awful, 10398, polymorphism associated with aggressive breast cancer in African American and leads to alter mitochondrial function, induces oxidative stress, provides resistance to cell death, and ultimately con uh, con uh, contributes to tumor genesis metastasis in mice. And 1135 also depletes the mitochondrial DNA and leads to the aggressive uh, tumorigenic properties. Uh, so the other part to conclude that there are many unanswered questions as we, we have discussed and other two speakers, how genetics is changing our understanding of race, uh, we need to figure that out, and genetic difference in response to the medication the drug which we touched upon uh, briefly by Dr. Basu and, and uh, Tangaraj. So I want to acknowledge somehow the pictures are gone. I'm, I apologize. Uh, so the Trevor was here. You don't see him. Uh, Prachi was here. <laughs> and, uh, and the Whoopender was here, those people who contributed uh, to the project. And I have no idea what happened to the, the pictures. So I stop here and take the questions.